About six months ago, we uploaded a video on Pen de Cristal uh, that became quite popular, actually. And one of our subscribers noted that we were using Caputo Type 00 pizza flour, which we did. And they suggested, he or her suggested, that we should instead use Caputo Manitoba. Which we're gonna do. <laughs> which we're gonna do. So I went out and bought a 25 kilo sack of that. And that flour, which I have here 600 grams of it, it has a protein content of 14.5%, so it's almost 1.5% higher than the pizza flour. And it has a baking strength of W380, where 400 is the highest. And that means it can take quite a lot of hydration. And that should make this even better than the previous pan de cristal. So we're going to try to make a 2.0 pan de cristal here. <laughs> so 600 grams of flour, and that requires 600 milliliter of water. This is 100% hydration dough. One to one. Eh? One to one, exactly. Uh, half a teaspoon of sugar, eight grams of dry yeast. The sugar is just to feed the yeast. There was actually another subscriber who said that's a ruggy move to do this. I beg to differ. It helps a lot with a little bit of sugar to proof your yeast so you're sure it's well and alive. Just incorporate this. And we put that aside to proof. And then we're going to take a big bowl, our flour. And we're just going to mix in 15 to 17 grams of sea salt. And you always want to do the dry mixing first so you don't risk to shock any of your yeast. Yeast and salt, they're not exactly good friends. So make sure this is mixed into the flour. Also, because we're not kneading this dough, we want the yeast to be well distributed throughout the flour. And now that's done. Now we just have to wait for the yeast. When you see some nice bubbles and foam on the surface, then you know that your yeast is well and alive. And this looks very good. So let's get that in here. All of that. And then with our spoon, we're just gonna mix this all together. And you will see that this becomes much like a batter, more than a bread dough. That will be better over the course of the next hour. In the beginning, it doesn't look very promising. No. <laughs> now we just need to make it well combined here. And there you see, it's almost like a thick pancake batter. But that's the whole idea. And it's not wrong. And we take our bench scraper here, get the sides down, so we get everything with us. And then we take a rectangular container, which I have oiled from before. And the reason for the rectangular, I'll show you after why that's good, because that helps us when we're going to shape the loaves. So we're going to dump this straight in here. There we go. We're going to cover this up and let it rest for 20 minutes, maximum 30 minutes, and then we'll get back with the next move. 20 minutes has passed, and as you can see, there's not much action yet. A little bit of bubbles are coming up, but that will change because now we're going to start building up some gluten strength in our dough. Right now, it's like playing with mud. We just take it from the sides, flip it in over itself, this will activate the start of the gluten buildup. Just do this 10, 12 times maybe. You can already see now that when you're turning it around here, it starts getting a little bit of strength pulling together in the middle. Look. Mm, it does actually. It yeah. does, it does, it does. It's not so, that gooey or a nope. bit less. A less gooey, gooey. less gooey, <laughs> still gooey. And we cover it up and we let it go another 20 minutes, half an hour. Now we're starting to see some action. I don't know if you can see it here outside the container. We're starting to get some bubbles. And if mm -hmm. we open it up, looks angry. we see them here. If you can see the surface now, if I do this, maybe you can see it on camera. We're getting some good action over here. So now we're going to attempt the first coil fold. It might break in the first attempt, but we'll see. We grab it from the sides here and we lift it up over itself, turn the bucket over itself and you see how it starts releasing now yeah, i can lift yeah. it up now i can lift it that's the gluten that strengthens up immediately so let's see over itself like this and one more time and now we let it rest again 
for another 20 minutes to 30 minutes. It's not because I want to bore you with coil folds, but I wanted to show you how much development we get between each look, how much is developed. Now you get really big bubbles. It grew almost to double height. <laughs> so now we're going to give it another coil fold exactly the same as last time with wet hands, obviously, and over each other, or over itself, actually, like this. It's beautiful. It's getting very strong. I'm curious, like, who ever thought of something like a process? I can tell you, it was a, I can tell you, it was a Spanish baker. I don't remember the name. This is a man and he has a name. A Spanish baker that wanted to make a Spanish uh, version of ciabatta and then upgrade it. So that's the history, Brian. I can't uh, remember his name. His name is Robert Paul. This is all the way. But anyway, <laughs> now we're going to close this up again. And then in 20 minutes, I'm going to give it one more coil fold. And then we're going to leave it for 45 minutes to an hour before we shape the loaves. And that's when we'll be back to you. Our dough here has grown to mutant proportions. And you can see the nice holes we have in here. It's looking really good. And it's almost triple in size. So now we are going to... First, we have to flour our work surface because this is still quite sticky, although it gained strength, as you can see. So... Let's give this some flour first. And our tools. Bench cutter, bench scraper. So they are all ready. Like this. And then the top of our dough, we're going to give a generous coating. So we can be able to move some flour down the sides. I'll show you how we do that. There we are. Then we take our small plastic bench cutter here, and then we're going to move it down the sides. So we move some flour down to help release. And this will ensure that we don't degas the dough too much oh, because gosh. we want to Check how big bubbles you yeah, have. Yeah, it's, it's crazy good. And there's actually, I can see a big difference on the flower, actually. I have to say that. So let's see if we can flip this out so you can see. Look at that. Wow. That is massive. So this is now the top, which used to be the bottom. We're going to flower this up again liberally. And I think... We will split this in fours like we did last time, although these are going to be bigger. They are huge. This flower is super strong, I have to say that. That was a good... Uh, Suggestion there from yeah. a friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was. I'm, uh, I'm happy with this. This is really amazing. And as you see, very high hydration, but you can shape them a little bit, if you're careful, because we don't want to deflate anything here. We want to keep the air in the dough as much as possible. Let's move that a little bit like that. And then we're going to take the first loaf here. And move that. We have a bit of wind, so I have to put some glass balls on top of the paper here. I guess well condition here. Yeah, yeah, it's quite windy. On the cliff. Yeah, exactly. See, and that looks beautiful. Second up. These are going to be quite good, I think. And very airy. This is going to be better than last time, I'm sure. Very curious to see the difference when we are finished here. Back up. There we go. We didn't lose any air bubbles here. No, no, they're intact. Shape them a little bit. And look, look at that. It's amazing. Wow. Anyway, now we're going to leave them here to proof open. We're not going to cover them because, as we did last time, we want sort of the crust to form a little bit of a film so that we get that eggshell uh, crust when we bake them. So we leave them here for... 45 minutes to an hour, we will see uh, when they're ready, and I'll show you.
Our loaves have proved, and you can see now that they're getting like bubbles around here under the surface, and they have formed a little bit of a skin, so you can see, I don't want to deflate them, but it's like a little bit of a hot skin that's perfect. I have the oven set up with a middle rack with two pizza stones, and it's rocking at 250 degrees Celsius. So now we're gonna carefully transfer these to a pizza peel here. And then we're gonna load them in. Like this. And two on the other side. And now we're gonna let them go for, let's say 15 to 20 minutes, then we check in on them. Probably we need 30 minutes in total. Let's see how we're doing. We are 20 minutes in, about. Let's get, see how we're doing. Oh, they're looking good. Nice. But they're definitely not there yet. We want to bake them much harder than this. So let's give them another 10 to 15. Our bread's there ready. So it's time to get them out of the oven. Oh, they are looking so good. Look at that. Mm -hmm. um, and listen to that. That is what you're looking for on a crust. Look here. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm just loving it. This is exactly what you want. Look here. It's like, Ooh. it's, look in there. <laughs> it's a canyon. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> so beautiful. Now they just need to cool down a little bit before we cut into them so I can show you how the beautiful structure they have inside because I can already tell that this is much better than what we tried last time. Cool down a little bit and here we are and listen to this. That's <laughs> crust baby, that's crust. <laughs> and now you see that's what you want to see and this is inside because of the high hydration, so moist, and the outside is like exactly what the name says, like glass. Let me get a slice here. And then I'm gonna test it in some good extra virgin olive oil because that is the best you can get. Just dip it there, straight up, nice. That's just fantastic. <laughs> I mean, the crunch on the crust here and the inside is so fluffy. I mean, it's like uh, you have no idea. Is there a difference with the Manitoba? A lot, actually. Yeah. Much better structure, um, more open crumb. Obviously, you could make it even more open if you would go for a longer fermentation with less yeast. But now we wanted to finish this in a couple of hours. So that's all up to you. But yes, the Manitoba flour Big difference to the uh, pizza flour, I have to say that. So, thanks for the uh, advice.